that there was a plague of leprosy uh, in the land. Okay, and he used Leviticus. Uh, I think it's Leviticus. Let me see. It. Let's see. Leviticus. Uh, let's see. Leviticus chapter. Let's go to Leviticus chapter, chapter 14. It says, when you be come into the land of Canaan, which I given you for possession, and put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession. Now, so they use that to say, the Canaanites had leprosy, they were white. Okay. If that is in fact what you're saying, if the Canaanites were white, we know Canaanites were the children of they were they were children of Ham, which is the father of the dark race of the people, according to many accounts. So Canaanites were also um, children that Israel had married into. So if we're going to use that as a as a theory, okay, using this, I'm not going to deal with that particular verse there because it's, it's, it's really 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 a new point. But their point is. Canaanites were white. Esau married a Canaanite, so that made him whiter. Red Esau married a white Canaanite, and therefore he got whiter, right? Okay. If that be the case, if that's your theory and that's your point, then explain to me in Judges chapter 3, right? Where it says, Judges chapter 3. We're not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm just kind of hitting some points here as I as I get ready to go with to Obadiah 1. Okay, now, a lot of stuff I plan to cover in Obadiah 1, I've already covered already. But if we go to um, Judges chapter 3, right, it says, the third chapter of Judges, it talks about those people that was in the land of Israel, that the, that the Most High allowed um, to remain in the land. And he said that he left them there. To prove whether or not, verse four, he said, and they were to prove Israel by whom, uh, by to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken to the commandments of Yahweh, which he commanded their fathers in the hand, by the hand of Moshe. And the children of Israel dwelt amongst the Canaanites, Hittites, Avites, Jebusites, and they took their daughters to be their wives, and took their their sons to be their husbands. Uh, <laughs> back up. They took their daughters to be their wives. And gave their daughters to be to their sons and serve their mighty ones. So we have Israel marry Canaanites. So if Canaanites were white, based on the, the, the curse of leprosy, that supposedly meant that all the Canaanites were cursed with white skin, this is what they teach. Then that would mean that Israel now became white because they married into the white Canaanites, using that particular theory that these people use about the Canaanites being white. So you can't use that either. So let's try something different because that don't work. Because if that's the case, because you believe Israel was black. So if Israel is black and we married white Canaanites, then guess what? Then the white people are authentic. Then yes, Israelites are white based on your theory. So it doesn't make any sense. It's a weak point. So using the, the, the plague of leprosy on the house to say the Canaanites was white, which is not true. Because if you, if you look at that, the plague of leprosy in our house, right? Now, it didn't say a plague of leprosy on a people. He said, well, the house means the people. No. You can have a plague of leprosy in one particular house and another house not have leprosy. It's like a person, could, people could have, uh, 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 could have a flu epidemic in one house and the other house not be affected by the flu epidemic. The whole land don't have to be affected by it. He said, verse 34, when you come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you as possession, and I put a plague of leprosy in a house, right, of the land of your possession. He says, and he, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, it seemeth to me that there is a plague in the house. 
So, if everybody had a plague, why would you be going to the priest to tell a priest about that particular house? It seemed like to me the priest would know that everybody in the land got leprosy. So, how is it that the whole house got leprosy, meaning the whole nation of Canaanites got leprosy, when the, you go to the priest to tell a priest about a plague of leprosy in one house? So that's a false. That don't even make sense. I mean, this 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 theory that these people teach, and then when you come and attack it, when you challenge it with the scriptures, now all of a sudden you got another agenda, and you being paid and all of that, you a seller because you pointing out this foolish garbage that these people are sharing. It's supposed to be a truth, but don't make any doggone sense at all. It's stupid. I, it don't even. That's the reason why I'm, I'm doing these videos is because I got too many people that constantly contact me and thinking that Hebrew Israelites are racist or prejudiced and hate white people. That's why I'm doing this for no other reason. I have no other agenda. I'm tired of people coming to me, coming to people that I know, and thinking that we are part of that foolishness. And when there's only one particular group of Israelites that believe that garbage. That's not something that's, that's taught in Chicago. That's not something that's taught in, in uh, 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 other, other places. Atlanta don't teach that garbage. Oh, you only hear that garbage up in them, the New York camps. The Great Millstones and the, the U, USPK people that teach that crap. I've never heard anybody else teach that until I came in contact with them. And they don't speak for every Hebrew Israelite. They don't speak for me because I don't teach that garbage. Esau is a white man. That is garbage. Squad diddly. It makes no sense at all. Plague of leprosy meant that all the Canaanites was white. You racist, prejudiced Hebrew, you. Let me get back. Okay, now. I did go way out there again. <laughs> all right, now. People like when I say that I got way out there. <laughs> now, so just covering some things on the way to covering some things. So, no, 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 no. Esau was a hunter. No, that would mean he's white. Because I showed you already that Nimrod was a hunter. Was he white? Israel was known to hunt to get the things that we needed to bring back. How do you think they got the livestock? They had to go hunt. How do you think they got the food? They had to go hunt. How could they eat if they didn't go hunt? You think the, the, the gang was going to come to them? Hey, I'm here to be sat on your plate. No, they had to go hunt. My dad was a hunter. He not an Edomite. He went, met. My dad would go in the field and and, and, and get deer and, and and all of the stuff you know that people did. Don't people? In the, there's a lot of there's a lot of black quote unquote black people that live in the country that hunt. A lot of them. Obviously, you guys, because y'all live up in the city. You don't know nothing about the field. You never seen anybody hunt because you you so used to walking the streets, going to the local store. People that live in the country, man, that don't that don't depend on stores. They go hunting and get their food, bring it home. Unlike the people that live in the up in the north that depend on the grocery store, they go get their food out the. They go into the into the into the field, and they hunt. And bring their food back home. I know that's a fact because my dad, like I said, I just I'm being repetitious, but my dad was a hunter. He wasn't an Edomite. If he had a particular taste for something, boy, he'd go get his rifle and go in the go in the field and go shoot it down and bring it home. <laughs> we wasn't supposed to eat it like that. You know, that's not Israelites not supposed to eat food shot like that. Not with no with no bullet wounds. That's another lesson. But anyway, let me get back. So, no, you can't use that. You can't say that. Okay. You can't say because he was hairy. He's Edomite. He's white because he's hairy. Because we had a prophet. We just pointed that out. Ellie Shot was hairy. Okay. Now, so what's next now? All right. So, I'm done with 25 25. That particular point is, is squat. It's garbage. It's, it's done. All right. Now, Isaiah, I mean, Obadiah chapter 1. Let's get there because I'm, I'm anxious. I know you're anxious to get to Obadiah chapter 1, right? Are you anxious to get there? I'm anxious to get there. So let's go, all right? Now, I'm going to move to the hard copy here. And my eyes are break from the computer. And we're going to be reading out of the, um, the Holy Scriptures, right? 
And uh, we're going to go right to the book of Obadiah. Right? All righty. Obadiah. Chapter 1. There's only one chapter in the book of Obadiah. And this is what these people use. And they don't understand what they use and teach this. Let's go to the book of Obadiah, chapter um, 1. All right. Let me get in my place here. Takes me a while to find it sometimes. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see. Here, we're here now. Obadiah chapter 1. Okay. It says here The vision of Obadiah, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, concerning Edom. We have heard rumor from Yahweh. An ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us arise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Right? Now, Esau, the first point I want to make out is, Esau is small, not the majority. According to what this book said. He said, I made you small among the heathen, which is the nations. And we're going to show you that those nations he's talking about is not the United Nations. It's not the Romans and all of those people. Okay. Well, okay, in a roundabout way, it may be the Romans, but I think this predated the Romans. But he said, I made you small amongst the heathens, the nations. We're going to show you those nations he's talking about, but he made a small amongst, right? And why did he make them small? Because Esau's sons kept getting killed off in war because they came back against Yaakov. That's why he was small. He was a minority because the men was getting wiped out. I made you small among the heathen because every time you raise up your head against your brother, I sent the, I gave, I anointed Israel, the 12 tribes, to wipe you all out. And then during the time of King Dawid, he raised up the tribe of Judah, Yehuda, the king of the line of the tribe of Yehuda, to wipe them out. So much that they fled out the land. <laughs> but up until the time of Dawid, they were living right there in Israel. Right there as servants. We read that in the book. You can't argue with that. They was raised up, reared up under the servitude of the nation of Israel. Those that was remained. They was not in the Greece or Spain. Or the Caucasus Mountains. They was right there with the Israelites as servants. He says, but I made you small among the heathen. So when did it happen? When they fled out the land during the reign of King Dawid, they got together with the heathen. They made a conspiracy against Israel. That's what they did. Thou art greatly despised. He said, the pride of thy heart hath deceived thee. Thou, hast, thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock. Okay? Where is the cleft of the rock? Mount Seir. That's what he's talking about. That was the land of Edom. The cleft of the rock. The mountains. The mountains of Esau. That's where it is. Whose habitation is high. See? The mountains of Esau is high altitude. Anybody that drives a truck or travels know that the mountains are in high altitudes. So pop your ears out if you get up too high in the mountains. That's where Esau Reigned. That's where he lived in Mount Seir. Thus saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Right? In other words, what is he saying? I am not going to serve Yaakov. I'm not going to be your servant bowing down to the ground. You're not going to make me serve you. I'm going to come and retaliate against you and I'm, I'm going to the, get the advantage, right? And thou shalt exalt thyself as the eagle. Right? Now, they say, well, the eagle, that's the symbol of, uh, 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 of America. That's the symbol of, 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 of Europe, of Britain. Oh, come on now. Before there was America and Britain, right? The eagle. Eagle. Do I need to go and, and, and deal with the eagle? Do I? Because if I do, I'll do a separate teaching and go and deal with the eagle. Let's try, let's try to finish this out. 
okay? If I need to do deal with the eagle, then let me know. We'll deal with the eagle, okay? Let me go back. But though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though, so he said, you exalt yourself like the eagle, right? Now, we can't use Deuteronomy 28, the eagle. See, the eagle took us into captivity, so the Esau is the eagle. No, 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 no. No, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Okay? Don't do that to yourself, all right? Now. Okay. Shall we? Must we? Do we have to? Let's go to the seventh chapter, Daniel, right quick. Just going to do this right quick. Real quick, I'm going to get back to Obadiah chapter when I got to because I can't be going way out here on this nonsense because people like, see, why you deal with the eagle? So I'm going to deal with the eagle, okay, real quick. Daniel chapter 7, right? All right. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and a vision upon his head, upon his bed, and he wrote the dream and told us some of the matters. Dawid spoke and said, uh, Daniel spoke and said, I saw my, in my vision by the night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens drove upon the great sea. And the four great beasts came from the sea, the verse one from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and, and made stand upon its feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Right now. He says, so the first beast was like a lion with wings, like an eagle, okay? It was a lion that had eagle's wings. Now, do we need to show you who he's talking about? Okay. Now, he said, brother, go ahead and show who you're talking about. Okay. If I must, I will. Okay, now, in Daniel chapter 7, right? All right. Chapter 7. I mean, we can do a whole lesson on the eagle and, and just debunk a whole lot of that stuff. Now, let's continue. Let's, let's, let's continue along with that. Okay, now. Uh, he said the first was like a lion, right? Had an eagle's wing. And then he talked about verse 5, another beast he saw, right? Which he said the second beast, um, he said another beast, a second like a bear, right? Then he, said, then he said the third beast was like a leper, right? And then he said, um, and I saw... In the vision, behold, a fourth beast, which was dreadful, and all of that. Now. Okay, now let's continue. Because now he's going to interpret that, right? Let me go to the hard copy because sometimes it's hard for me to find what I'm looking for. All right, Daniel chapter 7. Okay, we, we found the, 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 um, the lion in verse 14. Let's just continue to read here, okay? So, let's go down to verse... Um, If we look at that prophecy, the vision that the king saw, it said that the first was like a lion, right? Now, we know the first was like a lion, right? I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to come back, okay? It's on. 
Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. Your brother Kazakia coming back with another video. And we're continuing on this series on Esau is not the white man for dummies. And I'm going to play an old video that I've done, I think it was back in 2005, where I did a teaching on who the Gentiles are. And so I want to revisit this particular teaching. And so I want you to view it and, and let the Ruach Kadesta spirit speak to you so we can get that racism out your heart so that the Most High can redeem us Israelites from these lands of captivity and then we can be free to go home, be reinstated to our land. So, um, <laughs> that's a blooper. That's a blooper. <laughs> Okay. Cut. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Stop. Uh, shalom, 